Hi, my name is Christiane and I'm going to be doing my first project for my creative challenge for this new channel, Victory Makes. I've got this book here called The Art of Manipulating Fabric by Colette Wolfe. It's all about how to create texture and dimension in fabric. There are so many beautiful lessons in this book but they're really time consuming and that's why I've had this book forever and I've never used it. So I want to do that for this challenge. I want to take one of her techniques and apply it to a garment. And I've chosen a t-shirt to be the canvas for this project. I'm going to be sewing a cross tucking technique and for this pin tucks are sewn in a vertical and horizontal direction. It's going to result in a really beautiful plaid like appearance. So I've chosen silk organza for this project. This is definitely an unconventional fabric for this kind of garment but I really love that about it and I love that it's going to elevate the garment and make it feel really special especially since I'm putting all this work into it. Another reason I've chosen Silk Organza for the project is for its paper-like quality. I want to make sure that when I'm sewing the tucks and pressing them that I can fold and crease this fabric easily and I love that Silk Organza has the ability to do that and I also want to make sure that it's going to lend itself well in terms of drape to the garment that I'm making. So for my pattern, I'm knocking off an existing t-shirt that I own. Here I'm just finding the center of the shirt, which is going to act as my fold line when I'm cutting out the pattern. I'm going to be drafting half of the shirt. Later when I'm cutting out the pattern pieces, I'll place the center line on the fold of the fabric. Also, I'll be drafting the front and the back of the shirt together with variances to the neckline, but then when I trace the pattern, I'll extract the front and back out as separate pieces. I'm going to be changing the fit of this pattern to be a bit more suitable for the project that I'm working with. I'm going to do a little bit of an oversized style here. Because the silk doesn't have any stretch, I want to make sure that it's easy to take on and off. And just to make sure that I can fit it over my head, I'm going to add a little back opening. Here I'm just doing the sleeve and changing the neckline. And I'm going to be drafting a neckband, which will be cut on a bias. So I'm going to trace out the pattern pieces, extracting the front and the back of the shirt. And then cutting it all out once it's ready to go. So I've got my pattern here and the next thing I need to think about is how big the plaid repeat is going to be, how deep the tucks are, and the spacing between the tucks. So I'm going to work that out on paper first before I apply it to the fabric. Knowing that is also going to help me to calculate how much fabric I'm going to need for each piece of the project. I'm drawing the vertical tucks at varying widths for a combination of 3 8 and 1 8 inch tucks with varying spacing in between. I'll fold these vertical tucks and then in the horizontal direction I'll mark the exact same tuck placement. And then I'll repeat the folding. I can now see my plaid design taking shape. With the plaid design folded, I'll measure the final square, which is 4 inches. I'll flatten it out and measure it unfolded, which is 6 inches. So here I have my final pin tuck pattern. The fold lines of each tuck will get transferred to the fabric and once the fabric is folded, I'll sew the tuck at either 3 8 or 1 8 seam allowance according to my plaid pattern. I know it will take 6 inches square of fabric to achieve a 4 inch plaid square, so to calculate my required fabric, I'll draw a grid of 4 inch squares on my pattern pieces. Once I know how many squares there are in both length and width, I can multiply that number by 6. Once I've calculated the fabric amount for each piece, I'll cut my yardage down to these smaller, more workable pieces. Okay, so it's time to transfer the pin tucks to the fabric in the first direction. It's really important that the fabric is laid out with the grain line perfectly straight in both directions, so I've laid the fabric onto a grid paper and I'm taping the edges of the fabric to it, ensuring that all edges are straight to the grid. I can then use my pin tuck pattern to transfer the tuck placement to the fabric. 
I'll use two colors of chalk. Yellow will represent my 3 8 inch tucks and blue will represent my 1 8 inch tucks. This is really going to help me when I'm sewing as my tuck seam allowance will now be color coded. Okay, so I've got my fabric marked and I'm ready to sew the tucks in the first direction. And instead of using the iron, what I'm gonna do is just fold the fabric and I'm just gonna do a little hand press forming a crease in the fabric as I go. Once I do them all in this direction, I'm gonna mark the fabric again in the opposite direction and sew those tucks. Alright, so I'm just going to iron the pin tucks in one direction. I'm just gently pulling the fabric as I press just to make sure everything is super flat. And I'm starting to see the stripes take shape and honestly I, I could just stop at this point because I love these stripes, they look really beautiful. But next direction. Okay, so I'm going to be doing the same exact process of transferring the tucks in the following direction. Laying the fabric out, taping the edges, and lining the grain line, transferring the tucks with my color coding system. This is a little bit trickier to mark with chalk because I've got to trace over the tucks, but it's not too challenging. Okay, so I'm ready to sew the tucks in the perpendicular direction, and there's just a couple things I want to mention. Um, you want to make sure that the existing tucks are right side facing up as you get started, and also that they're turned towards you as you sew, so that when you're sewing, they're not going to get flipped back. So just make sure the tucks are facing you. And the next thing is that when you're turning the crease, that the stitch lines from the existing tucks are aligned on either side, otherwise you're going to get a skewed plaid. Okay. So I've made my first mistake and uh, I've sewn this tuck at the wrong seam allowance so it's going to affect the pattern but all I'm going to do is just sew it again at the correct seam allowance which is 3 8 and then later I'll just take out that extra row of stitching. Okay so I'm finding that I really need to pay attention to the under layer as I sew to make sure that these lines are aligning. So as I sew I'm putting my hand in between the two layers and I'm just pulling the under layer away from me which is going to help to just align the stripes of the tucks. Alright so that's the piece all tucked and now it has this beautiful plaid pattern and I love it. So much sewing on a piece of fabric, but um, I'm hoping that it makes a really beautiful shirt. We'll see. So I'm just doing my final press on the piece, gently pulling again, pressing the tucks in one direction, and it's so satisfying to see this final texture. All right, so I've just finished pin tucking all of the fabric for the shirt. I feel like I've just ran a marathon on my sewing machine with all of these tucks that I've sewn. It was super fun and I created this really gorgeous texture, but I'm not sure if I would do this again, but it was a really great challenge and I'm really excited to see how it sews up as a shirt. I love it as fabric. I think this would be really nice as a surface for a cushion. That would be perfect home decor. We'll see how this turns out as a t-shirt. I think it's going to be beautiful. I love the transparency in this fabric. I think that that was a key element to leading to the tucks lining up successfully as a plaid. So if you wanted to try this, that's a feature I would definitely recommend. Um, that's really going to help you. So I'm going to cross my fingers that this shirt looks beautiful and I'm so excited to sew it up. I'm going to do some special seam finishing on the inside just to bind the seams to make them look nice and clean and polished. And yeah, I hope it looks great. 
As I prepare for the piece to be cut on fold, I'm just going to pin the plaid stripes together. This is going to help to allow the plaid stripes to be straight along the body. The plaid is a little bit wonky donkey, but I want to do my best to make sure that the plaid aligns as much as possible along the side seams. So after cutting my first body piece, before I move on to cutting my next piece, I'm just going to mark the placement of the widest tucks along the side seam onto the pattern piece. I'll take my next body pattern piece and I'll transfer these marks to this body piece along the side seam so that when laying this next piece out, I'll align these marks to the plaid. I'm gonna cut several bias strips for the seam finish and for my back opening. Start by sewing my back opening. I'll be cutting a few inches down along the center back and I'll sew a bias strip along that cut edge. I'm going to double turn the binding towards the inside of the piece for a clean finish. Then I'm going to edge stitch the binding to secure the final edge. I'll sew the lower portion of the binding and I'll now have a beautiful back neckline opening. Before I sew any of the seams, I'm going to bind each of the side seam, shoulder, and hem edges with a bias strip. This technique is known as a Hong Kong finish. A bias strip is sewn right sides together to the piece's edge at a quarter inch. The binding is then pressed away from the piece and then turned under so it wraps around the edge. I'll then edge stitch along the binding to secure the underside. Finally, I'm going to trim away the excess binding on the underside so it's about an eighth of an inch away from the stitch. This is just going to tidy it up and reduce bulk. Once all the piece edges are bound, I'm going to sew the shoulder and side seams of the garment. I'm sewing an ease stitch along the cap of the sleeve just inside my seam allowance. This will help me to draw in the excess fabric along the cap so that it can be evenly sewn into the armhole. Finally, I'll sew the sleeve seam and begin to attach it to the constructed body of the shirt. I'm going to match key points such as the side seam of the shirt to the sleeve's underarm seam, along with all notches. I'll evenly distribute the cap ease and pin the sleeve along the armhole. When I sew the sleeve, I like to position the body of the shirt uppermost. The pulling action of the feed dogs help to draw the sleeveies in, making it less likely for the puckers to form along the cap of the sleeve. I'm going to sew a bias strip along the armhole seam, similar to how I bound the other seams, except that this binding is going to be clean finished on both sides of the seam. The first thing I'm going to do is trim the sleeve seam allowance down to about a quarter inch just to tidy up the edge, and then once the bias strip is sewn to the sleeve seam, I'm going to turn the remaining edge towards the inside and align that folded edge to the sleeve stitch line and then I'm going to edge stitch the binding in place. And now I have the most beautifully bound armhole and seams. Okay, I love a project that has buttons because I have so many buttons that I never get to use, so it's really nice to have the opportunity to do it. But, uh, so I did not buy a button for this project because I figured I have to use something in my stash, thinking I would have something that would match this. No problem, because it's navy, but I don't have a single navy button. So I'm just gonna pick from what I have 
and I, I don't know, I'm having a hard time with this. So I've got a couple of, um, well, this is really the only blue that I have, and it's like a cornflower blue. It's a really beautiful glass button, but it's just not the right thing. It's too, too contrasted in my opinion. Um, I also really like this like mother of pearl button. It's kind of cute, but maybe a little bright. So I'm thinking maybe I'll do a bit of a neutral. This is like a clear, like a bright clear button. I think that might be maybe too bright, but I don't know. Better than this. This one's cute, but it's a little like my grandma territory. I mean, my husband you, is really into this one. I like it too, but I don't know. To me, that just looks the most, most expansive. It most exp okay. All right, I'll do it. I'll do that. I think I need two. We'll see once I put the band on. So the last thing to do is to sew the neck band on. And you know, traditionally this would be a rib knit, but I'm gonna do a bias, sort of like a wide bias um, double fold band. And um, you know, I've had to do a little closure to get in and out of the garment because um, by the time the band goes on, without the stretch factor being there, it's gonna need a little opening. So that's what these buttons are gonna be for on the band. And uh, I'm gonna sew some little bias loops to go on the neckband. And then it's hem time and then we're done. I've got my neckband here, which is cut on bias. I'm just gonna fold it in half. And the reason I've chosen to cut this piece on bias is so that it has a little bit of stretch and can conform around the curved neckline. So I've just pre-pressed the neckband. This edge is gonna get attached to the shirt and then this edge will turn in and it's already got this little clean turned edge so that when I edge stitch it along the band to secure this underside, this will already be turned. So this just makes it nice and easy. I'm sewing the unpressed neckband edge to the garment's neckline. Before I finish the neckband, I'm gonna sew a button loop to one side of the neckband. I've got a bias strip here and I'm sewing it at one short end and along the sides at a quarter inch. I'll use this cool loop turning tool to turn the narrow loop right side out. I've shaped my loop and then I'll determine the size of the loop in accordance with my button size. Now I'll sew the loop to one end of the neckband. I'll then finish the two open edges of the neckband on each side of the opening. And I'll prepare the inner edge of the neckband to be secured to the neckline. I'm carefully pinning the neckband's inside edge to cover the neckband's stitch line. I'll transfer the pins to the right side and then stitch in the ditch along the neckband seam, securing the inside edge. Once I'm done that, I'll give a final press to the finished neckband.
I'm almost at the finish line. It's time to do the hems, so I'm gonna turn the garment and the sleeve edges up by one inch. I've already bound the edges, so I'm only gonna need a single turn hem. I've decided to use a hand blind stitch for my hems so that the stitch is as inconspicuous as possible. Well guys, I'm at the end of my journey with this t-shirt and let me tell you, what a ride. Um, that was so much sewing, but it was super fun um, and I think that it's turned out really beautifully. I, I, I had my doubts, but I'm really happy with it, um, thankfully, because if this didn't work out, I would be pretty upset. Anyway, so I'm at the last part where I'm just going to sew on the button and then it's out to try this on in the wild world. <laughs> Thanks so much for following along with this project. If you liked it and you want to see other videos like it, just subscribe to the channel over here. And if you want to get notified when the next video comes out, click the bell. And if you're interested in looking, or if you're interested in what, um, I'm going to put some links in the description below for some of the tools I used in this project, including the book by Colette Wolf that inspired this project. Thanks for watching, and if you have any ideas for projects that you'd love to see made, let me know in the comments below.